Good evening, mathematicians. Here's section 5.4 on the equilateral and isosceles triangles. Our objectives are to use the base angles theorem and use our isosceles and equilateral triangles. Hopefully we can answer the question, what conjectures can you make about the side lengths and angle measures of an isosceles triangle? All right, first let's get familiar with our vocabulary. So take a moment to jot down, fill in your notes for all the components of an isosceles triangle, which include legs, always at least two congruent sides. As illustrated on our picture, we've got two legs with the same congruent marks. We have our vertex angle, which is the angle formed by the two congruent sides. So wherever your two legs are, the vertex angle is the angle that's between the congruent sides. Please don't conclude that it's always at the top. Not true. Then we have our base, which is the third side and it's the third side that is not the legs. And please do not conclude that your base is always the bottom side. And then you have your base angles, and those are the angles that are touching the base. All right, here's a couple of theorems that we need to get familiar with. The first one is the base angle theorem. It states that if two sides of a triangle are congruent, then the angle opposite them are congruent. Our implied statement shortens this conditional statement to read, in one triangle, congruent sides implies opposite angles are congruent. Here's our picture. We have two equal marks on each of the legs. So if in one triangle, congruent sides, this is gonna imply that the angles opposite are congruent. And by opposite, we mean if this is the leg that I'm looking at, then across this angle. And then if I'm looking at this leg is congruent, then the angle across would be here. So if I have two congruent legs, then the angles directly across are also congruent. And then you have the converse of the base angle theorem. Remember, converse is to switch the hypothesis conclusion. So this should read, if two angles in a triangle are congruent, then the sides opposite them are congruent. Implied statement in one triangle, Congruent angles implies opposite sides are congruent. So here we have them switched. Now in one triangle, the congruent angles is going to, are going to imply opposite sides are congruent. All right, let's try out this proof about the base angles theorem. We're given that side AB is congruent to side AC. We want to prove that angle B is congruent to angle C. All right, so this is the information that we're given as far as the picture. And then what we want to do is kind of make a plan. So first, let's label our vertices and make sure everything's matched up. All right, so now we have all the vertices labeled and some additional markings to help us with the plan, which addresses part A. Part of the plan will be to draw segment AD so that it bisects angle CAB, as shown here. And because of our congruent marks on the two angles, we, we can conclude that this is a bisector, angle bisector. So use then the side angle side congruence theorem that we learned in the previous lesson to show that triangle ADB is congruent to triangle ADC. So we want to prove that ADB is congruent to ADC. And then ultimately we can use the properties of congruent triangles to show that angle B con is congruent to angle C, which is what we're trying to prove. So now that we kind of have a plan, let's put the plan in action. So set up your two column proof, statements on the left, reasons on the right. Make sure you number corresponding statements to reasons. So we always start with our givens or things that we can apply, imply from looking at the picture. For example, we drew in segment AD such that the angle bisector of angle CAB. And our reason is that construction of an angle bisector. And because we have an angle bisector, we can conclude that angle CAD, so CAD, is congruent to angle BAD, angle BAD. And this is true because an angle bisector implies two congruent adjacent angles. Then we can, at this point, list are given side AB congruent to side AC, reason given, 
And then we can always name a side that is shared between two shapes. So the same side that is shared between two different shapes are always going to be congruent to each other. And that's by the reflexive property of congruence. And that's all we need is two sides and an included angle. And if we have all the parts we need, then the two triangles are congruent. Reason, side angle side, implies congruent triangles. Now that we have the two triangles congruent, that means all the other parts, any other parts that we haven't named, are also congruent. So in this case, we can say that angle B is congruent to angle C. And our reason is CPCTC. If you remember from a previous lesson, this stands for corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. All right, let's take a look at example one. We're going to use the base angle theorem to name the two congruent angles here. So this is just you practicing the base angle theorem. Remember, the base angle theorem says if two sides of a triangle are congruent, then the angles opposite those congruent sides are also congruent. So here we have two sides, side FD and side DE congruent. So that means we can name angle F opposite of side ED congruent to angle E, which is opposite of side FD. And remember, the reason we can say angle E is congruent to angle F is because in one triangle, congruent sides implies opposite angles congruent. All right, we, here we have the corollary to the base angle theorem and the converse. So the corollaries are, if a triangle is equilateral, then it is also equal angular. Our implied statement says that equilateral triangle implies equal angular triangle. And we also have a picture to kind of help us visualize this implied statement and theorem. Then your corollary to the converse of base angle theorem states, if a triangle is equal angular, then it is also equilateral. And here's our visual. All right, let's take a look at example two where you're finding the measures in a triangle. So find the measures of angle P, Q, and R. So what we look at is in our triangle, we are given three congruent marks for all three sides, and it's the same number of marks on each side. So we can conclude that all of our sides are the same length. Therefore, this is an equal lateral triangle. Since the diagram shows that triangle PQR is equilateral, in other words, all sides have the same number of congruent tick marks, so by equilateral triangle implying equal angular triangle, which is the corollary to the converse of the base angles, triangle PQR is equal angular. So if it's equal angular, that means measure of angle P equals measure of angle Q, which equals the measure of angle R. This allows us to set up a mini equation. We can say that all three sides being the same times whatever the measure of angle P equals 180 degrees. And we know 180 degrees because the sum theorem states that the sum of all the angles in a triangle is 180 degrees. So we divide three on both sides, resulting in the measure of angle P equaling 60 degrees. So the measures of angle P, Q, and R are all 60 degrees. All right, more constructions. So please pa pause the video right here to follow steps one through four and try constructing an equilateral triangle um, using this segment AB given in your notes. All right, so we're gonna now use the isosceles and equilateral triangles properties to complete example three, where we wanna find the values of X and Y in the diagram. So take a look at your diagram, just to kind of get familiar with all of the marks. It looks like triangle KLN has all same marks in each of the angles. So I can conclude that this is an equal angular triangle. Again, if this is an equal angular triangle, then that makes it also an equal lateral triangle. So because triangle KLN is equal angular, this implies equal lateral. Therefore, side KN is congruent to side KL. So if that's true, then Y must equal 4. So now let's take a look at how we can find the value of X. Well, because 
angle LM, LNM is congruent to angle LMN. So take a moment to get familiar with these two angles. So that would be this angle and this angle. And LN is congruent to LM. And the reason we can state that is because of the corollary theorem. If in one triangle, angles congruent implies opposite sides congruent. So we can conclude that LM is congruent to LN. It's isosceles. So you also know that LN equals four. So that we figured out because of the equilateral on this triangle. So that makes LN four because KL is four. So that makes LN four. And if LN is four, then we can set up an equation four equals X plus one. And then solve for X. So I move one to the opposite side by subtracting. And so X, uh, three equals X, therefore X equals three. All right, take a look at this proof. I'd like for you to try this example four on your own and bring it to class, worked out and attempted. And we can discuss in class more clarifying. One strategy I would suggest, it states in the lifeguard tower, PS is congruent to QR. So that would be a good thing for you to mark because it's not included on the picture. Then it says an angle QPS is congruent to angle PQR. Also some things that you could mark. And what you're going to do is explain how to prove that triangle QPS is congruent to PQR and explain why you think um, triangle PQT is isosceles using the theorems that you learned in this lesson. So the base angle theorem, the converse to the base angle theorem, and your different corollary theorems. One suggestion for strategy is to sketch this picture and separate the two triangles. And when you do that, make sure you mark everything that you see here in this picture on your two separate triangles. All right, give it a try. I just want to wrap up this lesson by asking you this question and you attempting this final problem. Is it possible for an equilateral triangle to have an angle measure other than 60 degrees? So ponder that and come prepared to discuss in class. All right, let's take a look at our final example. We're going to find the value of x and y. Again, get familiar with your picture. One strategy is to draw separate images labeling everything. So we see that we have two triangles. One appears to be equilateral because of the congruent marks being the same on all three sides. And then an isosceles, single marks on two of the legs and then a double mark on the base. We're asked to find the vertex angle for this isosceles and one of the angles for the equilateral. Of course, if we find this angle, it's going to be the same all the way around. We also see a right angle mark. That's going to be important. And if we look at the picture as a whole, it does appear to be a quadrilateral. So some things to observe. We may or may not be using that information, but things to kind of look at. So pause the video and answer the question and attempt to find the value of x and y before seeing the final answers. So pause the video now. Go ahead, pause the video and try it first before you see the answer. All right, well hopefully you tried this problem before seeing the final answer. Here's our question answer to the question. No. It is not possible for an equilateral triangle to have an angle measure other than 60 degrees because each angle must be the congruent. So the only option is 60 plus 60 plus 60 equals 180 degrees. And then for your final example, find the value of x and y. All right, here you go. Check your answers and compare your work to my work. And if you have any questions, please bring that to class. And that's all for 5.4. Bring your questions and enjoy the cartoon. Have a good evening.